2 Corinthians 12, verse 9. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. <laughs> Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then am I strong. Hello, brethren, saints, church of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. It's been a while. Did a couple of shorts uh, while I was in Shalbina, but uh, and I gotta tell you, I'm not feeling well today. Nothing with the heart or anything, but um, I got some kind of a flu. I'm sure if I were to go to a Jesuit doctor, I'm sure they would tell me that I have the poison crown. Look those words up in Latin, you'll know what I'm talking about. Okay? Because remember, if you flatulate, that's a symptom of the poison crown. If you have ingrown fingernails, that's a symptom of the poison crown. I'm saying poison crown, look those words up in Latin, because to this very day, they protect that thing, oh, quite vehemently. Some can get away with it, but those who are saints can't. So, anyway, like I said, I'm sure if I were to go to a Jesuit doctor, they would say that I have the poison crown, and that they would, whatever, I don't know, I don't care. So, um, I beg your pardon, brethren. You're, you're a servant today. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> I beg your pardon. It's not. It's not even 75% today. So, bear with me. Please get your authorized version of the scriptures. And please read along with me in the scriptures we will be considering today. Now, i gotta, got to give you the title of this. The Need of Circumcision? Now, now, you little sweetheart cutie pies out there who like to take people's videos and chop them up and make people say things they didn't say. Um, to you, you wicked devils, all i got to say is this. Proverbs 18. Proverbs 18, verses 12 on to verse 14. All right? The Need of Circumcision. Proverbs 18, 12 on to verse 14. Before destruction, the heart of man is haughty, and before honor is humility. How can ye believe, those of you who receive honor from men, and not the uh, honor that cometh from God only? I just brad eyes that, excuse me. He that answereth a matter before he heareth it, it is folly and shame unto him. I remember the hunter from England once made a video about this, and he 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 focused on, well, what is a button? You know that annoying Jesuit provincial that he is. Um, he that answereth the matter before he heareth it, it is folly and shame unto him. The lowercase says, spirit of man will sustain his infirmity. But a wounded spirit, who can bear? Psalm 51. You know, I have been asked, and uh, uh, just, I, I got to get this out real quickly, uh, then we will continue. We've got a lot of scripture we're going to go through today. Please bear with your servant. I'm not even 75% today. I got like this dry thing in the back of my throat and... And you need to know this, things in my kidneys and just feeling deplorable today. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, please bear with you, sir. But, um, you know, I checked the channel today that the Lord gave me. That's a lot of subscribers. And thank you to those of you who subscribe. There are those of you like who will subscribe, unsubscribe, subscribe, unsubscribe. You know to who I'm talking to, uh, whatever, T-A, your initials, I won't say your name. But um, that's too much for me. 
I, you know, I know a lot of enemies and people who don't like what I say, and I, I speak from the scriptures. Uh, a lot of people are subscribed like that. Very few saints are. I get that. But, you know, I don't want all these subscribers. I, I really don't. I mean, thank you to those of you who do. Thank you. Thank you. You don't need to subscribe to a channel to watch their stuff. Okay, you don't. Okay, but that, that's something that doesn't really interest me. Um, it really doesn't because I have seen, especially with these Christians, and by the way, I'm not a Christian. I know you like to harp on that in 1 Peter 4 or whatever about, you know, if any man suffer as a Christian. You've got to take the context to what that word is being compared to. We never called ourselves that. That's what you, the world, called us. We didn't call ourselves that. I'm not a Christian. I'm a saint. What's a saint? Uh, there's a good video that the Lord gave your servants about that, which will be in the description box. Brother Alexander B. Hartley and myself, we talked about scripturally what a saint is. You're a saint. If you're a saved individual, you're a saint. Okay? But I'm not I'm not a Christian. Also, and here, here's for you, sweetie pie. You know, you can cut this up. I vehemently am against what Satan calls free grace. I personally believe that is the most dangerous heresy in existence today. Uh thousand dollar challenge of money I don't have find me verbatim free grace find it for me freely by his grace yeah and remember the free grace that these antinomianists offer you is not the grace of God they they offer a license to sin the gods of lascivious will be in the description box for you so hopefully that will irritate a few of you to go away okay I reject I hate Hey, sweetie pie, zombie Canadian, you hear me? I hate the grace that your father, Satan, offers because it is not the uh, grace of God. So you go and do your chop sake stuff with that and go away, okay? So, so are we clear? And also, too, I reject the satanic trinity. The trinity, one God and three persons. Here, let me show you. <coughs> To hell with your trinity? I spit on the trinity. It is of Satan. Saints serve one God who is comprised of spirit, soul, and body. Okay? So, are we clear now to whom you are watching? Okay? I rightly divide the word of truth. Salvation changes within the dispensation. The antinomianist tells you it's by grace through faith from beginning to end. They are idiots. And that is easily disproved. Okay? So, are we clear? Are we clear? Alright? Are we clear? Good. Now, Psalm 51. Psalm 51. Verses 6 on to verse 10. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts and in the hidden part Thou shalt make me to know wisdom. What is wisdom? The fear of the Lord. And apart from evil is understanding. First Peter chapter 3, 1 verse. Now, you've got to remember, brethren, the enemies of our Lord, the proponents of the heresies that are out there today, are juvenile. They are juvenile. They strain at a gnat and swallow a camel. They are petty. They are petty and juvenile. Okay, you've got to remember, you're dealing with children of the devil. And they are adolescent teenagers playing on a school ground. Okay, you can see this quite evidently with the antinomianist praise he ain't. Okay, and his whole group of people. They're, they're children. They're children of the devil. Okay, when you got a Jesuit coadjutor devil who can rightly uh, refute them for their actions, uh, that's saying something pretty bad about antinomianists. Okay, but in 1 Peter chapter 3, just one verse, verse 4. Now, you got to remember, I bring that up about our enemies because what's the context here in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 4? But let it be the hidden man of the heart, in that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which in the sight of God, which is in the sight of God of great price. Now, context, verse 1, likewise ye wives, he's talking on to women sisters okay but here's the thing 
Okay, and see this, this is the level of mind of the enemy, brethren. This is something that you have to intuit nowadays because of the pettiness and juvenile mentality of our enemies. They will say, well, see, that's only for women. And, and you say to like, Brad, that Brad, dude, <laughs> dude, never underestimate the pettiness and juvenile mindset of the enemy. Okay, I have, I have heard some of these antinomianist guys say some of the dumbest things that they're getting away with because of the ignorance of scripture. Okay, that's how these guys are able to get away with this. So when you, when you and I is the same, it's like, but dude, who would they, the enemies. The enemies of the Lord. And how would they process that? Well, to justify sin, they would say, well, see, they're talking about women. So the women are supposed to have the hidden man of the heart. <laughs> Psalm 86, huh? Okay. Psalm 86. Psalm 86. Verses 10 on to verse 13. For thou art great, and doest wondrous things. Thou art God alone. Teach me thy way, O Lord. I will walk in thy truth. Unite my heart to fear thy name. Oh. And you can chalk this up with a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Okay? You can. You can. I will praise thee, O Lord my God, with all my heart. And I will glorify thy name forevermore. For great is thy mercy toward me, and thou hast delivered my soul from the lowest hell. This is written under the dispensation of the law, which was faith and works. There was no eternal security right no, during this dispensation. you got to remember, it is not by grace through faith from beginning to end. By his grace through our faith is for this dispensation today. Okay, you got to rightly divide the word of truth. Okay, and of course, that will be in the description box for you. Uh, in foundations, all right, where we talk about rightly dividing the word of truth, okay, where we discuss the Godhead, one God comprised of spirit, soul, and body, and rightly dividing the word of truth, which these wicked antinomianists, Catholics, many even Baptists, and whatnot, and whatnot, all the flavors of Christianity, which is not of God, uh, are, you know, majority of them believe in one God and three persons. That's heresy, okay? <clears throat> but unite my heart to fear thy name. Hosea, Hosea chapter 10, Hosea chapter 10. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm really feeling horrible. <laughs> Hosea chapter 10, verses 1 on to verse 4. Israel is an empty vine. He bringeth fruit unto himself. Fruit unto himself. Christianity is all about you. It's all about glorifying you. Glorifying the flesh. What you can get away with. How close you can get to the edge and still uh, deceive yourself that you're saved. Okay? That's the danger of antinomianism. Which I said to you, I believe personally that is the most dangerous heresy there is today. Okay? Convincing someone that they can save themselves and justify all manner of sin. Uh, hey, you just believe and receive. That's that's dangerous. That is the most dangerous heresy there is today, in my opinion. Okay, let's continue. Israel is an empty vine. He bringeth forth unto himself. And see, we are to bring fruit unto God. Not that the Lord needs us, but he gets glorified by the fruit that he produces through us. It's not about us. Okay? That's why I don't want many subscribers. That's why I, I cringe when I hear people, my ministry, my ministry, and, you know, blah, 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 blah. Uh, I'm always recollected of Kent Helvin, uh, and there are other people who we're not going to talk about, but it's all about them. It's look at me, look at me. I, I detest that. I despise that. I despise that. According to the multitude of his fruit, he hath increased the altars. According to the goodness of his land, they have made goodly images. And Satan promises you, all this will I give unto thee. If thou fall down and worship me, all will be thine. Who's, uh, you know, 
Satan can bless people too with big successful ministries, big houses and pools and fancy schmancy clothes. Yeah, yeah. Their heart is divided. Now shall they be found faulty. He shall break down their altars. He shall spoil their images. The heart is divided. See, Solomon tried to have his cake and eat it too. Antinomianists, uh, virtually, virtually every flavor of Christianity, and Christianity is not of God, okay? We talk about that in many videos. Just put in Christianity in the search thing uh, on your laptop, and you'll go from there, okay? But um, <clears throat> Christianity is not of God. And Christianity is all about justifying self. Like I said, like I said, Satan can also bless people. All right? Their heart is divided. King Solomon tried to eat his cake and have it too. He tried to play both sides. Christianity gives you a means to where you can play both sides. They offer you an option C. Okay? Antinomianists are one of the worst examples of this. They give you a means to justify sin. And you go on your merry way deceiving and being deceived that you're actually a saved individual. Now remember, saints mess up. We sin every day. Okay, we've talked about this in length. Romans chapter 7, okay? you got to understand what that's talking about. We sin every day. Okay, but the saint, saint, whose heart belongs to the Lord, See, like I've done the analogy of these guys will go around in a circle, but the saint sooner or later has to stop because we can't make any more excuses. But see, the antinomianists, these devils, all they are about excuses, justifying themselves. For now they shall say, we have no king because we feared not the Lord. What then should a king do to us? They have spoken words swearing falsely and making a covenant. Thus judgment springeth up as hemlock in the furrows of the field. Ye shall know them by their fruits. Ye shall know them by their fruits. Jeremiah 32, verses 36 on 40. Jeremiah 32, verses 36 on 40. And now, therefore, thus saith the Lord, the God of Israel, Consider this, concerning this city, whereof ye say it shall be delivered into the hand of the king of Babylon, by the sword, and by the famine, and by the pestilence. Behold, I will gather them out of all countries, whither I have driven them in mine anger, and in my fury, and in great wrath. And I will bring them again unto this place, and I will cause them to dwell safely. Now this happened in part in 1948, when God brought back the children of Israel in unbelief. Okay? That's, okay, partly. But see, here's the context. And they shall be my people, and I will be their God. And I will give them one heart, and one way. Jesus Christ, he is the way the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by him. Okay? That they may fear me forever, for the good of them, and for their children after them. And I will make an everlasting covenant with them, that I will not turn away from them, to do them good. But I will put my fear in their hearts, that they shall not depart from me. Question. Has this happened today? No, no. If Israel were servants of the Lord, Israel would be a messianic nation. Okay? You ask a Hebraic Jew um, about Christian, by the way, why they detest to be affixed to that appellation, Christian, but rather uh, would be want to be called a messianic Jew. They got it right. Because the Hebraic Jews, more often than not, will equate Christianity with Catholicism. And when uh, we were watching something on that disgusting Scientology, which is stupid, 
um, the one dude talking about Christianity did the same thing. He affixed Christianity to Catholicism. Okay? All right? But has this happened yet? No, it hasn't. So it's a future of fulfillment after the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? At his second coming. There will come a time during the time of Jacob's trouble when Israel will realize, oh boy. Oh boy. Okay? But this has not happened yet. Colossians 3. Colossians 3. Colossians 3. Verses 22 on to 25. Colossians 3. 22 on to 25. Servants, obey in all things your masters according to the flesh, not with thy service as men pleasers, like Christianity is. How can ye believe? Ye that receive honor one from another, and not seek it the honor that cometh from God only. Hmm? But in singleness of heart, fearing God. If you fear God, you're going to love God. Uh, fear or love, <laughs> right? There are those out there, it's like, you know, how can you love someone you fear? Have you had an earthen father? You loved your father, but you were afraid of making him angry that he'd get that twitch, uh, twitch out for, or switch, whatever it is, I'll be corrected later. Switch and just beat the snot out of you. You were afraid of that, but you loved him. This, see, and in the society, especially here in America, where the father has been removed from the equation and the feminazi um, doctrine of God, woman, child, pet, man has been instituted. Okay? All right? <clears throat> but singleness of heart. Fearing God. Fear or love will be in the description box. Okay? And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as to the Lord, and not unto men. <laughs> knowing that the Lord shall, knowing that of the Lord ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance, for ye serve the Lord Christ. I don't serve men, I serve the Lord. Okay? This is being done for the benefit of the saints, but I'm not in charge here. It's when people are in charge of their own little precious ministry. And they pat themselves on the back and get their own little cult following. Yeah. But he that doeth wrong shall receive for the wrong which he hath done. And there is no respect of persons. Unless, of course, you save yourself by your own belief. Unless, of course, you go to the church that Christ founded. Or unless you're black. Or unless you go, or unless you're a Baptist or whatever. Or unless you have the gift of tongues, right? Mark the messenger and uh, is God a uh, respecter of persons will be in the description box for you. Okay? These are videos that you can, you know, these topics that we're not touching on deeply right now you can look at, okay, for your own benefit. Okay, let's continue. In, uh, let's see, Proverbs 18. Go back to Proverbs 18. Verses 1 and 2. We're reading about the heart, have you noticed? The heart. And you hear Christians, well, God knows my heart. But see, a broken and contrite spirit, a broken heart, is a heart that belongs unto the Lord. In singleness of heart, a heart that belongs to the Lord. When you have antinomianists and Christianity who there's no room in their heart for the Lord because they are their own God, they want to serve themselves. See, there is no room for God their heart. But what do they? Proverbs 18, 1 and 2. Through desire, a man having separated himself, seeketh and intermeddleth with all wisdom. There are two wisdoms. There is a wisdom that is first earthly, sensual, devilish, that comes from the devil. And there is a wisdom that is first pure, peaceable, uh, easy to be entreated, full of good fruits, without partiality and hypocrisy. The fear of the Lord fear of the Lord. That is wisdom. And apart from evil is understanding. And today is the 26th, by the way. A fool who says in his heart there is no God. Proverbs 53 and also Proverbs 14 scripturally tells you what a fool is. 
A fool hath no delight in understanding, but that his heart may discover itself. Yes, yes. And of course, of course, you have to go to Jeremiah 17, verses 9 unto verse 11. 17, verses 9 unto verse 11. The heart is deceitful above all things, and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways, and according to the fruit of his doings. As the partridge sitteth on eggs, and hatcheth them not, so he that getteth riches, and not by right, shall leave them in the midst of his days, and at his end shall be a fool, getting riches, but not by right. A thief climbeth up some other way, he's a thief and a robber. Just believe and receive. You gotta belong to Christ's church. You're saved because you're black. Okay? You're you're saved because you have the gift of oh, those, you know, speaking in tongues, or you've seen the Lord, you know you have it. And go on and on and on and on. Okay? But intermittleth with all wisdom, remember. All wisdom, like we read in Proverbs 18. And see. Christianity offers the heart. How many of you have heard that from these Christians? Well, God knows my heart. Yes, he does. Yes, he sure does. Ecclesiastes 10, verses 1 out of verse 3. Ecclesiastes 10, verses 1 out of verse 3. Dead flies cause the ointment of the apothecary to send forth a stinking savor. So doth a little folly him that is in reputation for wisdom and honor. Solomon was in reputation for the fear of the Lord. But the women, his wives, took away his heart. A wise man's heart is at his right hand, synonymous with the Lord being on the right hand of God, but a fool's heart at his left, the left-hand path. This does not mean that if you're a southpaw, that's wrong. Okay, that's not what that means at all, okay? That's the distinction. Jesus is on the right hand of God. They, you read that in Scripture, on the left-hand path, okay? All right, that's what that's talking about, all right? Yea, also when he that is a fool walketh by the way, by it, trying to be something they're not, trying to take on the appellation of a saint, but yet they're not of us. Good example is that idiot uh, uh, grafted in the hell ministry who's just a, a clone of his idol. Okay? He's not of us. Okay? He's not a saint. He's not a saint. He's a heretic. Okay? And see, a guy like that, when he walketh by the way, okay, his wisdom faileth him. Because he's all about men. He, that dude teaches you that it's not your faith, but it's the faith of Jesus. Which I'm waiting to hear from one of the brethren that that guy's going to uh, matriculate into the mind of Christ. That we actually have the literal mind of Christ. Mind of Christ means that you have a servant's mind. That you are not all about yourself. That's what that means. I would not be surprised if that idiot would come out with that eventually. Okay, just saying. Okay. <laughs> Who are we at? Yeah. Anyway. Yea, also, when he that is... A fool walketh by the way, his wisdom faileth him. And he saith to everyone that he is a fool. He shall know them by the fruits. When they try to do what is right according to Scripture, rightly divided, they try to walk by the way. And Jesus Christ, he is the way, the truth, and the life. But see, they're offering you a Jesus who isn't. Nine times out of ten, they're offering you a Jesus of one part of a three-person trinity. The Pentecostals are uh, modalists, okay, which is closer to the truth, but remember, okay, saints, we're not modalists, okay? One God taking the mode of this, and no, no. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one, okay? Not three persons, but three components of God. You and I are made in the image of God. We have a spirit. We have a soul. We have a sagging skin suit. Okay? That's what that means. All right? Proverbs 28 now. 
Proverbs 28. See, a, uh, a heart that belongs unto the Lord, we don't trust in our own heart. We, we fail often every day and um, through pride. You know, I have a pride problem, okay? Um, I do. And sometimes I can get puffed up in my heart, but then again, the Lord's like, you know, cut me down right off of my high horse. I think a lot, of, especially these stupid King James Bible-believing Christians, and I, you heard me right, you have made King James Bible-believing Christianity just another denomination, sir. Uh, shame on you. you. You got what you wanted. But I think a lot of these guys need to be cut down, uh, taken down off their high horse. Look at the comment sections. I, I arrest my case. But Proverbs 28, verses 25 under 26. He that is of a proud heart stirreth up strife. But he that putteth his trust in the Lord, he shall be made fat. And see, when you save yourself by your own belief, your faith is in your faith, not in God, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. In Rome, your faith is in the sacraments, in what you do, not in Jesus' witness. In Pentecostalism, your faith is in the gifts you have, not the Lord himself. Okay? Or that you saw the Lord. We walk by faith, not by sight, you idiot. I'm saying that with charity, self-sacrifice. I am. Okay? He that trusteth in his own heart is a fool. But whoso walketh wisely shall be delivered. Written in the dispensation on the wall, okay? Got to rightly divide the word of truth, dear friend. Now go back to Psalm 51. Psalm 51, verses 16 on to verse 19. Psalm 51, 16 on to verse 19. For thou desirest not sacrifice, else would I give it. Thou delightest not in burnt offerings. And then see the antinomianists who want to tell you that it is by grace through faith under the law that the things were object of faith. No. No, that's a lie. There was no permanent seal of the Holy Ghost and what is that spirit under the law. There was no eternal security. God the Father didn't dwell in people permanently under this dispensation. That is significant for this dispensation. And also for the 144,000 Hebraic Jews during the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? This is the dispensation where eternal security abounds. And also for the 144,000 Jews during the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? Why were you offering the offerer offerings? Okay? We read in scripture that Ahab, he offered offerings according to the law. But where was his heart? It was in the hand of his wife Jezebel. Okay? He went through the motions, but see, his heart was not right with God. See, and under the law, your faith was in God, that he would honor you for doing what he prescribed in the law. And you read the book of Hebrews, and it talks about this, okay? All right? Under the law, there was a sacrificial system. The blood of bulls and goats, okay, covered sin. The blood of Jesus Christ, the death, burial, and resurrection, washes it away, okay? That doesn't mean that you don't sin anymore, okay? That's stupid, sinless perfection idiots. Okay, that, that's stupid. That's, that's stupid. <laughs> okay, that's stupid. When you got antinomianists that can rightly refute sinless perfectionism, that ought to be a warning to you. Okay? All right, let's continue. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. And see, when you save yourself by your own belief, you are the object. Your faith, it's you. It's not the Lord. Okay, it's not the Lord. All right? Broken of self-righteousness is a requirement for us today. You need to be broken before you can be fixed. Contrite. Contrite. Hold your place here. One of my favorite verses in all of Scripture. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 15. This is a faithful saying, worthy of all acceptation, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom they are chief, of whom I am chief. 
See, the false will say that, but in works they deny him. They will say that, but they don't have the power of the Lord because the Lord is not within them. Well, whose fault is it? Well, it's mine. But see, everything you say to me, everything I heard you say, points to the woman that thou gavest me to be with. She did give me of the tree and I did eat. See, you got to be, see, and see, this is the danger, brethren. There are a lot of guys out there who can talk the talk. There are a lot of guys out there who sound right, who actually believe the right doctrine. Who, if you were to ask them, this is the authorized version, this is perfect and there, given by inspiration, word of God, amen, amen. And even defend it. But they're lost. Why? Because there isn't a circumcision of the heart. There isn't a circumcision of the heart. And what is that circumcision? The Lord Himself. And contrition, contrite. You take responsibility. Anti-knowing them, well, we're all sinners. And with these guys, I'm telling you, with free grace devils, you just scratch them lightly. And, well, I'm not as bad as so-and-so. And any saint knows, it's like, I'm worse. I'm worse. I'm doing better than I deserve. I deserve death, hell, and the grave. See, Christianity has no true concept of what the grace of God actually is. But they give you a counterfeit, a license to sin. Or something that comes from Francis. Excuse me. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart. O God, thou wilt not despise. Do good in thy good pleasure unto Zion. Build thou the walls of Jerusalem. Then shalt thou be pleased with the sacrifices of righteousness, with burnt offering, and with whole burnt offering. Then shall they offer bullocks upon thine altar. Why were they doing that? Because they were doing it out of the right heart. Ahab, you can read about him. He didn't do it out of the right heart. He just did. He went through the motions. Okay? And you got to remember, the death, burial, and resurrection hadn't happened yet. The blood shed on the cross had not been shed. There was no eternal security under the law okay hence it is not by grace through faith it's impossible it's impossible okay all right now psalm 52 the christian who boasts him why boastest thou thyself in mischief O mighty man the goodness of god endureth continually Again, again, people, you listen to these Christians who justify sin, who call the morality of the law. And that's the thing about the Antinomianists, which we prove to you in the video of the gods of lasciviousness. They're not bound, they believe they're not even bound to the morality of the law. See, salvifically, the law is not binding today. We are saved by his grace to our faith. The law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ. Okay? Right, that's how that works. But the morality, the moral structure of the law, them guys ain't even a part of that. They are their own moral standard. Okay, we prove that. Uh, we prove that in the gods of lasciviousness. Okay, categorically. All right, they are their own god. They are their own standard. Okay, and they boast themselves in mischief. Well, I just believe and receive, so I can do whatever I want because the more you sin, more grace abound. Right. Right? And hey, I'm not under the law, I'm under grace. So hey, live it up. You know. And some of them are like, you shouldn't do that, but don't worry about it if you do. Live it up. That God gives us all things for to enjoy. All things are lawful for it unto me, but all things are not expedient. Okay? Thy tongue deviseth mischiefs, like a sharp razor working deceitfully. Thou lovest evil more than good. And today, look outside your door. I was in Chicago during the Demi Demikami Convention, okay? <laughs> the trickle-down effect with that. Today, people call evil good and good evil, okay? Thou lovest evil more than good, and lying rather than speaking righteousness, silah. And every single one 
of these free grace devils. You're liars. You're offering another gospel and another Jesus. God hates liars. Okay? They're lying to you people. Okay? And they are just another daughter of the whore, Roman Catholicism. Alright? Thou lover, lovest all the following words, O thou deceitful tongue. God shall likewise destroy thee forever. He shall take thee away and pluck thee out of thy dwelling place and root thee out of the land of the living Selah. The righteous also shall see and fear and shall laugh at him. Now we think we're all high and mighty nowadays, you know. We don't want to, you know, but, you know... When some of these devils get what they deserve, it's like, you stupid idiot. Lo, this is the man that made not God his strength, but trusted in the abundance of his riches and strengthened himself in his wickedness. Remember, riches are not just relegated to the do re mi. You can have uh, you riches, lots of subscribers, public opinion, fine clothes, a myriad of cars, a myriad of properties. Yeah, riches. A myriad of books. You name it. Riches are not just relegated to the do re mi, even though that's what you and I instinctively think of. Got to remember that. But I am like a green olive tree in the house of God. I trust in the mercy of God forever and ever. And see, Christianity makes you trust in yourself. I will praise thee forever, because thou hast done it. Who did it? He did. Not us. Unless you go to Christ's church, unless you're a black Hebrew Israelite, or a Calvinist, or you're a Baptist, or you see God, <laughs> or you save yourself by your own belief, pick one. I will praise thee forever, because thou hast done it. And I will wait on thy name, for it is good before thy Christians. Oh, excuse me, saints. Of course, fool's proverb today. We got we can't get away from uh, the 26th and reading something out of today's proverb. Proverb 26, 24 and 28. He that hateth dissembleth with his lips, and layeth up deceit within him. Do you guys realize... It is hatred to tell you, just believe and receive. God's not angry at you. God loves you unconditionally. That is not true. Now, if you go the way that he's elected, the way of the cross, broken, contrite, and in fear of him, you call upon his name and he saves you and seals you with himself, then, okay, yes, his love is for you. But the Christ-rejecting sinner, no. And this is a problem with all of Christianity. Virtually all. Not, not every single flavor, but virtually all of it. They all go back to God loves you. No, he doesn't. You reject the Christ who is, Jesus Christ, who is God the Father, and the gospel today, repentance towards God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? The death, burial, and resurrection, the blood shed on the cross. Okay? You reject that. God's love is not for you. God's wrath is for you. Okay? God does not, present tense, love the Christ-rejecting sinner. That is one of the biggest lies of Christianity today. The God loves you. God loves you so much, it's disgusting. Atheists, Muslims, Hindus, Buddhists even can decide. It's like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. God loves me, but he's going to send me to hell? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. When he speaketh fair, believe him not. For there are seven abominations in his heart. Oh, these guys who speak like a dragon, who speak in this very uh, monotone voice with a with a accent of England. And they, they, they put on the facade that they're such gentle, kind people. Okay. Yeah. Whose hatred is covered by deceit. His wickedness shall be shewed before the whole congregation. It is pure hatred 
For someone to tell you that God loves you unconditionally and you're a Christ-rejecting sinner, it is pure hatred to tell you just believe and receive. That's hatred. That's hate. That's hate. Whoso diggeth a pit shall fall therein, and he that rolleth a stone it will return upon him. A lying tongue hateth those that are afflicted by it. You got these guys. Well, don't worry about it, man. You believe and receive. Don't worry about it. The more you sin, the more grace abounds. Okay? We're not under the law. We're under grace. Okay? Maybe you shouldn't do that, but don't worry if you do. Just live it up, man. Besides, God gives you everything to it. That's what those guys do. That's their modus operandi. That's what they do. Okay? That's what they do. A lying tongue hateth those that are afflicted by it, and a flattering mouth worketh ruin. God's not angry at you. God loves you. And you've got to come to the church that Christ found it. Huh? Don't you know that you're one of the elect because of your skin color? Like I said, uh, to this day, I, I irritated some black Hebrew Israelites, apparently. They got pretty upset with me. Take a, uh, take a number. Okay. Now, circumcision. What we looked at, okay, see, a lot of people can put on the appellation of saint. They could put on the outer adornment, but see, there is that of the heart, a broken, contrite heart. A broken heart, a contrite heart, is one that belongs to the Lord. And in there lies a circumcision. But circumcision, Circumcision, okay? Genesis chapter 17. Genesis chapter 17, okay? Genesis chapter 17. Verses 9 on to verse 15. And God said unto Abraham, Thou shalt keep my covenant therefore, thou and thy seed after thee in their generations. And Abraham's seed will be for you in the description box. Okay? This is my covenant, which ye shall keep between me and you, and thy seed after thee. Every man child, man child among you shall be circumcised. Find me in scripture, female circumcision. The sons of Ishmael, the Muslims, practice female circumcision. We won't get into the specifics, but they took a, take a specific part of the woman and cut that off. And they call that female circumcision. Nowhere in Scripture, nowhere is circumcision relegated to a woman. Not at all. Not at all. Have you heard that? Female circumcision, as taught by some of the sons of Ishmael, the Muslim, they, they practice a female circumcision. Where they take that certain thing of a woman, use your imagination, either rip it out or cut it off. Okay? That's nowhere in scripture. That's grotesque. That's grotesque. For this is my covenant, which ye shall keep between me and you and thy seed after thee. Every man child among you shall be circumcised. And ye shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin. You know what this is talking about. And it shall be a token of the covenant betwixt me and you. That is why... When you see the obelisk, like in Washington, like in Rome, like in the graveyard in Shalbina, the obelisk is a male is an uncircumcised male phallus. That's what an obelisk is. Okay. And the spirals or the things, the steeples on church buildings, satanic, uh, you know, phallus houses. Okay. We're adults here. Okay. We're adults here. All right? And it shall be a token of the covenant betwixt me and you. And he that is eight days old shall be circumcised among you, every man child in your generations. He that is born in the house or bought with money of, the, of any stranger, which is not of thy seed. So see, someone else could be grafted in at that in this dispensation. Okay, but see, 
They had to be circumcised physically. They had to be under the law. Okay? Guy, remember, under the Old Testament, under the law, the Hebraic Jews were the equivalent of what we, the body of Christ, are supposed to be today. But with vast differences. No eternal security under the law. Okay? Today, we have eternal security. Today, we are not to keep the law for salvation. Under the law, obviously, you had to keep it for salvation. Okay? And our Lord Jesus Christ was circumcised the eighth day. And he that is eight days old shall, <coughs> shall be circumcised uh, among you, every man, child, and your generations. He that is born in the house or bought with money of any stranger, which is not of thy seed. He that is born in thy house and he that is bought with thy money must needs be circumcised. And my covenant shall be in your flesh for an everlasting covenant. And the uncircumcised man-child, whose flesh of his foreskin is not circumcised, that soul shall be cut off from his people. He hath broken my covenant. Because, see, today our soul is in the hand of the Lord. Under the law, take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Okay? Under the law, there was an aspect of you keeping the law where your soul was in your own hands. See? By doing the law. Verse 13, And God said unto Abraham, As for Sarah, Sarai, Sarai, thy wife, thou shalt not call her name Sarai, Sarai, but Sarah shall be, shall her name be. So she went from Sarai to Sarah. A change. Look over in verses 4 and on to 7 in the same chapter here. And as for me, behold, my covenant is with thee, and thou shalt be a father of many nations. Like I said, Abraham's seed will be in the description box for you. Okay? Neither shall thy name any more be, be called Abram, but thy name shall be Abraham, for a father of many nations have I made thee. So in circumcision, obviously... There is something that changes. Okay? But see, what brings about that change? See, like I've told you, you got to beware about these guys who talk about the change life gospel. What is the agent? What is the catalyst that produces the change? came across this one uh, alcoholic guy, uh, whatever, who looked like Randy Blythe. If you don't know who he is, good. Um, change life. Change life. What necessitated the change? Was it being made a new creature? And I will make thee exceeding fruitful, and I will make nations of thee, and kings shall come of thee, out of thee, and I will establish my covenant between me and thee and thy seed, singular, after thee and their generations, for an everlasting covenant, to be a God unto thee and to thy seed after. Okay? All right? I beg, I beg your pardon. Now, Exodus 12. That's the first appearance of circumcision. It was unto Abraham. Abraham who came out of Shem. Abraham. The line of the Hebraic Jewish people. Okay? If you're a, Ham, a Hamite, you cannot be a Hebrew. If you're a Japhethite, like I am. You cannot be a Hebrew. Even those uh, some of Shem are not Hebrews, like the Japanese, the Chinese, the Thailand guys and whatnot. They are not Hebrews. But of Shem came the Hebraic line. Okay, you got what is a Jew will also be for you in the description box for you, okay? Exodus twelve, forty three on to fifty one. Exodus twelve, forty three on to fifty one. <coughs> And the Lord said unto Moses and Aaron, This is the ordinance of the Passover. There shall no stranger eat thereof, but every man's servant that is bought for money, when thou hast circumcised him, then shall he eat thereof. A foreigner and a hired servant shall not eat thereof. In one house shall it be eaten. Thou shalt not carry forth aught of the flesh abroad out of the house, neither shall ye break a bone thereof. 
All the congregation of Israel shall keep it. And when a stranger shall sojourn with thee and will keep the Passover to the Lord, let all his males be circumcised, and then let him come near and keep it. And he shall be as one that is born in the land, for no uncircumcised person shall eat thereof. One law shall be to him that is homeborn, and unto the stranger that sojourneth among you. See, under the law, yeah, Gentiles could uh, be right with God, but see, they had to go under the law. There are those out there who disputed that because they believe it's by faith, by grace through faith. Under no, no, right there. Okay, right there. This proves their stupid argument it is by grace through faith under law. No, it wasn't. Don't believe that lie. Okay. One law shall be to him that is homeborn, and unto the stranger that sojourneth among you. Thus did all the children of Israel, as the Lord commanded Moses and Aaron, so did they. And it came to pass the selfsame day that the Lord did bring the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt by their armies. Now, Acts chapter 15. Acts chapter 15. Okay. Again, um, mark the messenger video, um, God respecter of persons, about people who want to bring you under the law okay uh, we don't have it's not a salvific requirement to keep the law today you couldn't keep the law today even if you tried okay the law was there to show us our inadequacy that we need a savior okay those the law was God's perfect commandments which only the Lord Jesus Christ could keep okay Jesus Christ is come in the flesh okay but Acts chapter 15 Okay, now salvifically, we are not to keep the law today for salvation. Uh, and here's the thing about the antinomianist. They say the morality of the law you don't even have to adhere to as sort of a moral compass. So, okay, then who tells you it's uh, wrong to kill, wrong to steal, and stuff like that? Well, that's also in Romans chapter 13, minus the Sabbath, which was assigned unto the Jews, and also keeping of the law. And cute people out there, it's like, well, there's no talk about idolatry in that. It's like, have you read First and Second Corinthians by any time, pal? Okay. Acts chapter 15. And certain men which came down from Judea taught the brethren and said, except ye be circumcised after the manner of Moses, ye cannot be saved. Got to keep the law. And see, being circumcised, keeping the law. You have to keep the law to be saved. Guys like Mark the Messenger and many other people out there preach and teach that you have to keep the law. You got to keep the commitment. You couldn't do that if you tried. Does that mean we should reject them as a moral, as a morality? No. But salvifically, no. You can't. You no. Know. No. No, no, no. Or nay, nay. Okay, let's continue. Wherefore, when therefore Paul and Barnabas <coughs> had no small dissension and disputation with them, they determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain other of them should go up to Jerusalem unto the apostles and elders about this question. And being brought on their way by the church, they passed through Phoenix and Samaria, declaring the conversion of the Gentiles. And they caused great joy unto all the brethren. And when they were come to Jerusalem, they were received of the church, the body, not a building, okay? and of the apostles and elders. And they declared all things that God had done with them. But there rose up certain of the sect of the Pharisees, tradition, scripture, Catholic, tradition, scripture. That's what a Pharisee is. Which believed, okay, the Pharisees, these Pharisees believed, saying that it was needful to circumcise them and command them to keep the law of Moses. And the apostles and elders came together for to consider of this matter. And when there had been much disputing, Peter rose up and said unto them, Men and brethren, ye know how that a good while ago God made choice among us, that the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe. And God which knoweth the hearts, bear them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost, even as he did unto us. And put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. Unless, of course, you, you save yourself. 
or you go to Christ Church, they found it, or you got a certain skin color, or you speak in tongues, right? Now, therefore, why tempt ye God to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? But we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved even as they. And see, the antinomianists, it's by faith through grace to them. They don't say that openly, but everything that they preach and teach. The object of their faith is faith, just like the uh, name it and claim it guys, okay? Very similar in that, all right? Now, Romans, okay, Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 4. Now, this also, we have the video uh, about um, James 2, okay, the differences between these, okay, but Romans 4, verses 8 and on to verse 12. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. Cometh this blessedness then upon the circumcision only, or upon the uncircumcision also? For we say that faith was reckoned to Abraham for righteousness. How was it then reckoned? When he was in circumcision or in uncircumcision? Not in circumcision, but in uncircumcision. We just read it. Okay? And he received the sign of circumcision. A seal of, of the righteousness, of the faith, which he had yet been uncircumcised, that he might be the father of all them that believe, though they be not circumcised, that righteousness might be imputed unto them also. Now seal there. That does not mean that they were eternally secure. Eternal security is for today. The death of Christ within you. He seals you until the day of redemption. That was not in the Old Testament. It wasn't. Okay? It's not by grace through faith under the law. All right? And the father of circumcision to them who are not of the circumcision only, but who also walk in the steps of that faith of our father Abraham, which he had yet, which he had being yet uncircumcised. What we first, and uh, that was it, being uncircumcised. James 2 video will be for you in the description box. Okay? Any questions about that? Because in James, James asked the question, can faith save him? Which is contrary to what Paul preached. What happened? The book of James is written for the Hebraic Jews during the time of Jacob's trouble. During the time of Jacob's trouble, the 144,000 Jews are the ones who will have eternal security. Everyone else is kind of, <laughs> okay? It's written for another dispensation. You've got to rightly divide the word of truth, dear friend. Okay? Uh, verse 11. Look at verse 11. And he received the sign of circumcision, a seal of the righteousness of the faith, which he had yet been uncircumcised, that he might be the father of all them <coughs> that believe, though they be not circumcised, that righteousness might be imputed unto them also. The Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. That's 1 Corinthians chapter 22, uh, chapter 1, verse 22. Okay? This is why so many people are replacement theology. Because they want to take on to them the covenant that was in a different dispensation and affix it to themselves. Roman Catholicism is replacement theology. Okay, Black Hebrew Israelitism is replacement theology. Antinomianism is replacement theology. Okay? They replace the Lord with themselves. Okay? Okay? That's why, that's why, yeah, I remember Eric John Phelps said that we're all Jews. No, we're not. No, we're not. Again, what is a Jew? We'll be for you in the description box. Okay? No, we're not. All right? I'm a, J I'm a Japhethite. Okay? I'm not a Hebraic Jew. I'm not Shemitic. Okay? All right? All right? But see, the Jews require a sign. And today, there's a lot of, you know, today we walk by faith, not by sight. But in Christianity, there's all these signs. Haven't you noticed that these guys are uh, paying all this attention to the book of Revelation? 
and trying to uh, move the signs that are in the book of Revelation and try to make them valid for it? No. No. But then again, remember the book of Revelation. I'm not even going to go there. Okay? All right? <clears throat> Exodus 31. Just one verse. Exodus 31. See, outward circumcision was a sign gift. Was not a sign gift, but was a sign. Sign on to who? The Jews require a sign. Exodus chapter 31, just one verse. Verse, is that 13? I can't read my own writing. Exodus 31. Come on, fingers, work with me. One second, one second. Sorry about that. Exodus 31, verse 13. Speak thou also unto the children of Israel, saying, Verily my Sabbaths ye shall keep, for it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations, that ye may know that I am the Lord that doth sanctify you. And we just read that Abraham received the sign of circumcision. A visual thing. The Jews require a sign. Okay? Alright? And ex and also, too, this is another thing about the Seventh-day Adventists. I, and I have some respect for some uh, Seventh-day Adventists. But see, when you try to say that it is a salvific requirement to keep the law and also to keep the Sabbath, oh, nay, nay. No, it's not a salvific requirement. What was the Sabbath for? Exodus 20, uh, Ezekiel 20, 20 under verse 22. And hallow my Sabbath, uh, 19 under 22. I am the Lord your God. Walk in my statutes and keep my judgments and do them. And hallow my Sabbaths. And they shall be a sign between me and you, that ye may know that I am the Lord your God. Now today, you know, you read about this in Romans 14. If you want to keep the Sabbath, if you want the Sabbath to be your day where you pay attention to the Lord, knock yourself out. You start saying that's a requirement for salvation, heresy. Okay? Notwithstanding the children of his, the children, notwithstanding the children rebelled against me. They walked not in my statutes, neither kept my judgments to do them, which if a man do, he shall even live in them. They polluted my Sabbath. Then I said I would pour out my fury upon them. To accomplish my anger against them in the wilderness. Nevertheless, I withdrew my hand and wrought for my name's sake, that it should not be polluted in the sight of the heathen in whose sight I brought them forth. I beg your pardon. <laughs> I beg your pardon. Okay? So, the physical circumcision, which was a requirement under the law, we just saw that, was a sign was a physical sign. Okay? Alright? Now, Galatians 5. Galatians 5. Now, see, one of you cutie pies out there want to say, Oh, Brad's preaching that you got to be circumcised. There are two types of circumcision. There's a physical one and there's a circumcision of the heart, dear pal. Which you Christians, most of you, there are saints out there who want to call themselves Christians. Why you do that, I have no idea. That's your problem. But the um, majority of the Christians, there's that, not that circumcision of the heart. There isn't. So yes. See, there's a physical circumcision, which was a requirement under the law, right? The dividing word of truth. And there is another circumcision. Galatians chapter 5. Verses 1 under verse 13. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. And we read in Acts 15, uh, Acts 15 that not even the Hebraic Jews could keep the law. Only one did, and that was God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. Hence, his flesh was sanctified by keeping the law. Okay? Behold, I, Paul, say unto you, that if ye be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. Circumcised, wanting to put yourself under the law. 
okay? Because you'll point to Timothy. Well, he circumcised Timothy. Yes, he did. To identify him as more of a Hebrew, even though he was a hybrid of, uh, of, of Japheth and Shem. Okay, that's why he circumcised Timothy. Okay, but did Timothy keep the law self ethically? No. No. But see, what Paul is talking about, which was addressed in Acts 15, you got guys like Mark the Messenger coming around who believes he's in Hebrew. And he says to you, you got to keep the commandments. You know, that's what he's talking about. That's what's being addressed. That these people are willfully putting themselves under the law to justify themselves. Because what happens? The law is not a faith. You can say, well, I did this, 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 this. Look at the Catholic. I've been confirmed. I had communion. I give tithes. I've done penance. Okay? The antinomianist. I just believe and receive. The Pentecostal. I've seen the Lord. No, you haven't. I speak in tongues. And Behold, I, Paul, say unto you, that if ye be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. For I testify again to every man that is circumcised that he is a debtor to do the whole law. Christ has become of no effect unto you. Whosoever of you are justified by the law, ye are fallen from grace. For we through the capitalist spirit, that's significant, capitalist spirit signifies the Lord himself. Okay? Wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. For in Jesus Christ neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision but faith which worketh by love. In verse 6. Ye did run well. Who did hinder you that ye should not obey the truth? Some smooth talking devil. Minister of righteousness. No marvel. For his ministers are transformed as the ministers of righteousness. Okay? guy who comes around speaking like a dragon. You know, you gotta, you need to keep the law today. Paul was a false, pro uh, false prophet. Yeah. This persuasion cometh not of him that calleth you. Calleth you the way of the cross, not Calvinism. Okay? A little leaven leaveneth the whole lump, but all things are lawful for you, remember. I have confidence in you through the Lord, that ye will be none otherwise minded, but he that troubleth you shall bear his judgment whosoever he be. And I, brethren, if I yet preach circumcision, why do, yet, why do I yet suffer persecution? Then is the offense of the cross ceased. The death, burial, and resurrection, the blood shed on the cross. Okay, The Lord is not on the cross. You see uh, the Catholic cross, the Lord is still on there. That means it's not finished. So if Christ is still on the cross, then there's something you got to do. How convenient Mark the messenger comes around. you got to keep the commandments. Right. The offense of the cross, it's out of your hands. And see, that's why so many people hate it, but yet claim that they love it. you got to be broken of your self-righteousness. You can't point the finger at anyone else. It's your fault. And also, get the hell scared out of you. And see, in that fell swoop, you, the lesser, can't wait to call upon the greater. And see, you Christians don't understand that because you are the greater in your own heart. All right? I would they were even cut off which troubleth you, trouble you. For brethren, and here's, here's the antinomianist. For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty, only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. And see, the antinomianists, all they are about is the occasion of the flesh. Okay? But by love serve one another. There's the mind of Christ being a servant. Okay? Galatians 6, 12 on to verse 15. As many as desire to make a fair shoe in the flesh, they constrain you to be circumcised only lest they should suffer persecution for the cross of Christ. And they make you twofold more the child of hell than themselves. For neither they themselves who are circumcised keep the law, but desire to have you circumcised, that they may glory in your flesh. 
praise that I ain't that idiot. He's worse than whoever it was who converted him to the satanic easy believism. Okay? The Canadian zombie in doctrine is a little bit more sound than the praise that he is. <laughs> that guy's an idiot. That guy's Catholic. Pretty much. Anyway. Anyway. If you don't know who that is, leave it that way. <clears throat> For neither they themselves who are circumcised keep the law. But desire to have you circumcised, that they may glory in your flesh. But God forbid that I should glory, save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me, and I unto the world, death to self. For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision but a new creature. Look at verse 6 in chapter 5. When Christ Jesus neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision but faith with which worketh by love. We love him because he first loved us. And see Christianity comes around and preaches to you that you can love your sin and eat your cake and have it too. <coughs> but not circumcised in heart. They're lacking that circumcision of the heart. They're not saved. And guess what, dear friend? Guess what? Guess what? If you're not circumcised in your heart, you ain't saved. Now, you know, some will ask, well, you know, about circumcision. Remember, we just saw that circumcision, physical circumcision, was a sign for the Jews. Romans 3, verse 1 and 2. What advantage then hath the Jew? What profit is there of circumcision? Much every way. Chiefly because that unto them were committed the oracles of God, the Hebraic Jews. Not the Hamites, or the Japhethites, nor the Japanese, Chinese, Korean, or whatever. No. But unto those called out of Shem, the Hebraic Jewish people. The line of Abraham. Okay? Alright? And also Acts 7. Acts 7. 6 on 8. Acts 7, 6 on the 8. And God spake on this wise, that his seed should sojourn in a strange land, and that they should bring them into bondage, and entreat them evil for a hundred years. And the nation to whom they shall be in bondage will I judge, said God. And after that shall they come forth and serve me in this place. And he gave him the covenant of circumcision, and to Abraham, and so Abraham begat Isaac, circumcised him the eighth day, and Isaac begat Jacob, and Jacob begat the twelve patriarchs. That's why the dispensation between the Garden of Eden and between the law is called the patriarchal period. That's when God took Abraham, Abram out from amongst his people, Shem, to establish the Hebraic line, from whence Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Okay? That's one of the main reasons why the Hebraic Jews were not to intermingle, even though know, they did. Okay, perfect example, you have Ruth, who was a Moabitess. Okay, but, okay, let's continue. Let's continue. Uh, Romans 2, Romans 2, 25 on to 29. Romans 2, 25 on to 29. Again. What is a Jew will be for you in the description box. Okay? If you have any questions about it, because I remember Eric John Phelps, he was one of the guys who said, well, we're actually Jews. No, we're not. You look in Scripture, what is a Jew? A Jew is someone who keeps the law. Okay? And the law was given on to the Hebraic Jews. There is that exception in Esther, yes, showing that a Gentile could become a Jew, meaning keeping the law. But see, the distinction between a Hebrew you Hamites. Yes, a Hamite can be a Jew. Keep the law. Sure. But you can't be a Hebrew. And remember, scripturally Hebrew is allotted with Jew. With the one exception in Esther. Okay? Got to remember that. Like I said, we answer that question in what is a Jew. Okay? Quite extensively. But Romans 2, 25 on to 29. 
For circumcision verily profiteth if thou keep the law. But if thou be a breaker of the law, thy circumcision is made on circumcision. If you offend in one point, you have offended at all. No one can keep the law perfectly. Only Jesus Christ, who is God the Father, could. Okay? Therefore, if the uncircumcision keep the righteousness of the law, because the law is written in our hearts, okay? Shall not his uncircumcision be counted for circumcision? And shall not uncircumcision, which is by nature, if it fulfill the law, judge thee, who by the letter and circumcision doth transgress the law? Letter, Old Testament law. Okay, it says so right there. Okay? For he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly. And remember, distinction between Hebrew and Jew. Okay? For he is not a Jew which is one outwardly. Neither is that circumcision which is outward in the flesh. So many people who think they are saints, they can say the right things. They can believe the right doctrines. They can tell you that this is the perfect and errant, given by inspiration word of God. But they're lost. Why? But he is a Jew which is one inwardly, and that circumcision is that of the heart. In the spirit, lowercase s there, and not in the letter, whose praise is not of men, but of God. Not in the letter, meaning the law. Not that you don't go to read the scriptures. That's stupid. Okay, You guys not reading the scriptures is how idiots like antinomianists can get away with what they're getting away with today. And then you got the Jesuit cemeterians. Yea, hath God said the Greek. Hey, hey, twinkle toes. Which Greek? I, did, I don't get an answer to that when I ask them that. They say the originals. The originals that even your Jesuit scholars tell you don't exist. Yeah. 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 Acts 7. Acts 7. And see, a circumcision of the heart... We saw Psalm 51. The closest thing scripturally, Psalm 51, you're ever going to get to a sinner's prayer. Okay, the, sinner, the, the Our Father is not a prayer for us. That's a prayer for Jews. Okay? All right? Just keeping that in mind. And besides, that's not the Lord's Prayer. The Lord's Prayer is John 17, the whole chapter. But, Acts 7, 51 on to 53. And see, this is where the Christian misses it. This is where the dividing line comes in. A saint, <coughs> sooner or later, will give up with the excuses. But someone else who isn't. The woman thou gavest me to be with, she did give me of the tree, and I did eat. If you've been through what I've been through, beloved, that's grotesque. That's justification of self. Acts 7, 51 through 53. Ye stiff necked and uncircumcised in heart. And ears, and always, ye do always resist the Holy Ghost, as your fathers did, so do ye. Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted? And they have slain them which shoe before the coming of the just one, capital J and O, of whom ye have been now the betrayers and murderers, who have received the law by the dispensation of angels, and have not kept it. Good. And our Lord says, you know, uh, you say that ye were, you know, if you wouldn't consent to the deeds of your fathers. Therefore, you, by saying that, you say that ye are the children of your fathers, the ones that killed the prophets. Christianity. You get it? And now, Philippians 3. Philippians 3, verses 1 unto verse 11. I'm struggling, brethren. Sorry for blowing my nose during this. Like I told you, I'm not even at 75%. I am not doing well. 
But my heart's okay. <laughs> Philippians, <coughs> Philippians 3, 1 through 11. Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. To write the same things to you, to me indeed, is not grievous, but for you it is safe. Beware of dogs. Beware of evil workers. Beware of the concision. Look at this. Look at this. For we are the circumcision which worship God in the lowercase s spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. And Satan is all about flesh. Christianity is all about flesh. Haven't you figured that out? Though I might also have confidence in the flesh, if any other man thinketh that he hath <coughs> Excuse me. If any other man thinketh that he hath whereof he might trust in the flesh, I more. Circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, and Hebrew of the Hebrews. He had all this going for him. God's not a respecter of persons today. As touching the law of Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecuting the Christians. Hmm? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's not what that says. Concerning zeal, persecuting the church, the body, not the building. Touching the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. But what things were gained to me, those I counted lost for Christ. Yea, doubtless. And I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but none, that I may win Christ. And be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law. Your own righteousness. Just believe and receive. Your own righteousness. You're saved because you're a black Hebrew Israelite or a uh, elect Calvinist. Your own righteousness. Church that Christ founded. Your own righteousness. You've seen the Lord and speak in tongues. Your own righteousness. You go to a Baptist church and are there every day, every time the doors are open. Yeah. Yeah. And be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. And that doesn't mean that we have Jesus Christ's own faith. And you guys who follow the main individual, uh, I hope you guys have separated yourselves from that guy. That guy's a wicked heretic. It's not your faith. It's a, you wicked devil. Uh, uh, that's going to be in the description box. There's going to be a lot of videos for you in the description box. Okay? Anyway. Anyway, let's continue. <clears throat> that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his su sufferings being made conformable unto his death if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. And that doesn't mean that he's working to save, to save himself. No. Working out your own salvation means that the Lord has put himself within you. That is what is worked out. Okay? Now Colossians 2, verses 8, on to verse 15. Colossians 2. Verses 8 on to verse 15. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Bear, bear with me. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit, after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, not after Christ. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, one God comprised of spirit, soul, and body. God the Father is the soul. Holy Ghost is the Spirit. The Word made flesh is the body. Okay? God became flesh. 
flesh did not become God. Okay? Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit, after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. For in him dwelleth the, all the fullness of the bo Godhead bodily, and ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power, in whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands, something you don't do. And what is that? Circumcision of the heart. Which the false don't have. In putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. See, under law, if you touched a dead body, that would affect your soul. Because there wasn't that circumcision, uh, like right there, uh, circumcision made without hands. <clears throat> That's why under law, if you ate pork, it would affect your soul. Because the circumcision without hands wasn't there. A different dispensation. That circumcision made without hands. What is that? In whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands, in putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ, buried with him in baptism, where, wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God, who hath raised him from the dead. Water baptism doesn't save you. Wow. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 15, 16 videos in the description box so far. Wow. And what, what are we reading to here? Verse 15. And you, being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, <coughs> blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross. We can't keep the law today. I mean, we, I mean, we don't keep the law today, but we couldn't keep the law perfectly anyway. We already read that in Acts 15. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a shoe of them openly, triumphing over them in it. And what? The death, burial, and resurrection, the blood shed on the cross. Okay? Colossians 3, 8 unto 11 now. But now ye also put off all these, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. That includes profanity, which the antinomianist pond scum is notorious for. But that is also corrupt communication. Remember, a filthy, excuse me, filthy communication out of your mouth. Remember also, communication does, right there, obviously, context out of your mouth. But communication is more than just what you say. It is in your body language and how you behave. Okay, remember that. Lie not one to another, seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds. You've got to make the right choice. You've got to make the right decisions. And have put on the new man, which is renewed in the knowledge, in knowledge after the image of him that created him, where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond or free, but Christ is all and in all those who are saved. Okay? By his grace through our faith. Okay? Now, what is the circumcision made without hands? Romans 8. Romans 8, one of the least favorite uh, chapters of Romans. Well, no, to the antinomianist who tries to tell you that Romans 9, 10, and 11 is Paul writing for the Jews during the time of Jacob's trouble, like Mr. Fig tried with uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, saying that Paul was writing to the Jews. Warning! Paul's doctrine for us today is for us today. Watch out for people who try to... That's a, that's a, a variation of hyperdispensationalism with the two-body thing. Okay, Watch out for that. We already read the one verse to prove that there's only one body. Okay? Romans 8, 
verses 5 on to verse 11. I feel terrible. Woe is me, huh? For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the capitalist spirit, the Lord himself, the things of the capitalist spirit. For to be carnally minded is death. What does it mean to be carnal? Fleshly. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. Now you could use that, you know, we don't keep the law to be saved. But again, the mora the moral, the morality of the law, okay, the morality of the law, which the antinomianist denies. It's like we're, we're not even bound to the morality of the law. And it shows. It shows when you're your own standard. <clears throat> okay. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Yeah, because you're too busy pleasing yourself. There's no room for the Lord. No room. Okay? No room for the Lord. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the capitalist spirit. If so be that the capitalist spirit of God dwell in you, now, if any man have not the capitalist spirit of Christ, he is none of his. 2 Corinthians 3.17 Therefore, if any man... Uh, no, that's fine. Excuse me. First, 2 Corinthians 3.17 Now, the Lord is that capitalist spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, and where the capitalist spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we have the Holy Ghost. The Lord is that Spirit. One God. Okay? Not three persons. That's heresy. <clears throat> you have questions about the Trinity, find them on their channel. Okay? And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. But the capitalist Spirit is life because of righteousness. Does that mean we should sin because great? Dude. See that, and see, that is what the antinomianist does. Banking off your ignorance. Okay? But if the capitalist spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you. Okay? Oh, wait a minute. Let's read verse 9 again. But ye, but ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken and make alive your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you, sealed until the day of redemption. A saint has got the Father dwelling within him, that, dear friend, is the circumcision made without hands. The Lord in you. Colossians 1, 27 on the 29. To whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory, whom we preach. <clears throat> warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom, fear of the Lord, that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus, perfect in heart. Whereunto I also labor, striving according to his work, which worketh in me mightily, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Work out your salvation with fear and trembling. The Lord is our salvation. Work him out. He must increase, but I must decrease. It's not that we're working to save ourselves. We are to work out what the Lord has put in himself. Sealed until the day of redemption, dear friend. 1 <clears throat> Corinthians 13. 1 Corinthians 13, 5 on 8. And here, uh, oh no, 2 second, uh, second Corinthians 13, 5 on to verse 8. Examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith. 
Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves? How that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobates? How do you examine yourselves? The Bereans search the scriptures daily. They received the word with all readiness of mind. They wanted truth. So they searched the scriptures daily, whether these things were so. I examined myself first through this perfect standard. Therefore, because I judge myself by the perfect standard, I'm judging you by the same standard. See how that works? And see, Christians, don't judge me. Only God can judge me. Oh, shut up. How does God judge you? Through scripture. Anyone who says, don't judge me, only God can judge me, they're lost. They might be a novice. we got to give greeting for that. But if you're trying to justify yourself, well, don't judge me, only God can, you're lost. You're lost. How does God judge you? Through Scripture. See, Paul didn't judge his own self because he knew his judgment was flawed. He judged himself through the perfect standard. But I trust that ye shall know that we are not reprobates. Now I pray to God that ye do no evil, not that we should appear approved, but that ye should do that which is honest, for though for we be as, though we be as reprobates. According to who? Oh, Christianity hates the saints. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. For we can do nothing against the truth, for the truth. And therein, in verse 8 too, lies the saint. We can go around in that circle justifying, 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 but we can do nothing against the truth but for the truth. Uh, I am a sinner who is chief. It's my fault. I did it. I am the man. I can't. It's not her fault. She didn't hold me at gunpoint to do what I did. It's not anyone's fault that I'm engaging in sin by my own. And uh, <clears throat> when you go around trying to justify sin, well, if you've been through what I've been through, yeah. Yeah. 1 Corinthians 3. 1 Corinthians 3. Verses 17 on verse 18. If any man defile the temple of God, now this is only for saved people, him shall God destroy, for the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. Oh, uh, wait, let's read 16 on to verse 18. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the capitalist spirit of God dwell in you, and the Lord is that spirit, sealed until the day of redemption? If any man defile the temple of God, and any man includes yourself, him shall God destroy, for the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. Let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seemeth wise in this world, let him become a fool, that he may be wise. Let's very read verse 19. On to 20. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, He taketh the wise in their own craftiness. And again, the Lord knoweth the thoughts of the wise, that they are vain. What, what wisdom is that? Wisdom that is earthly central devilish. Second Corinthians chapter six. Then we will be done. And I'm dragging here. <laughs> dragging, not dragging. Excuse me. I harp on this, brethren. A lot of us saints know this, but remember. On YouTube, you are only as val valid as your latest video. And uh, you got to remember, <clears throat> there are so many out there who are so smooth. you got to be careful of these things. 2 Corinthians 6, 14 on verse 18. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? What concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? What agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God, as God hath said, I will dwell in them, 
walk in them. And I will be their God and they shall be my people. <coughs> See, Christ in you is that circumcision made without hands, which the majority of Christianity does not have. You're not saved. And if Christ be not be in you, you're lost. Wherefore, come out from amongst them, among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. And I will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. So, physical circumcision is obviously not a requirement today for salvation. Obviously not. We have greatly proved that. Most uh, men-child children that are born today are by just circumcised unless specified otherwise. <clears throat> but um, and in that that is not our fault. Okay? But but there is a circumcision of the heart. And that circumcision of the heart is the Lord Jesus Christ. And unless you've gone the way of the cross, broken of your self-righteousness, man up and taking responsibility for what you did and have the hell scared out of you and call upon the name of the Lord and he saved you and sealed you unless that is there unless that circumcision of the heart is there you're not saved deal with it so that is going to be it for this video brethren got a long uh, uploading process to be done here thank you for watching this if you do uh, please pray for your servant. <laughs> I am not doing well, but uh, thank you, dear brethren, dear sisters. Um, also, uh, please pray for our dear brother, Jeff Jones. Um, he had one of his um, caretakers just was, yeah, it was, pray, pray for Jeff Jones, brother Jeff Jones, caretaker. Um, that was like, wow. Wow, even today. Uh, but pray for one another, okay, dear brethren, and please keep us in your prayers. And, uh, thank you for watching this. If you do, I love you. We will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.